I'm Chris Hawkes and I'm a painter so I mainly work with oil paint and then a bit of mixed media as well and my practice is sort of about collaging different elements together so like all of the things you see in my paintings are like images that I've processed in a way and then they're kind of collaged together on the canvas there's a sort of difference between the really structured meticulous like drawn stuff here and then very much spontaneous stuff on the canvas. I like to have different scales for the objects and people just so it kind of breaks down a narrative. And then I would like to do some more bigger pieces as well, I think, um, but a little bit less often to get to do that. But I think there's like a connection art historical wise to like a really long canon of kind of painting. And then also to sort of like abstract expressionist painting as well. Like I like to use a traditional like half chalk ground because it gives that kind of more European sort of chalky feel underneath, which is nice to try and, even though there's quite a pop arty feel to some of the images or imagery, I kind of want to balance that um, sort of slickness and then the kind of texture and kind of paperiness of living in like a real, in real life sort of world. Like a lot of my images sort of, they, I want to look like they're kind of sampled even though they're not, so you get that kind of where is it from? Is it from the internet? Is it from a book? Is it? There's sort of a, I don't know, I try not to limit where I take my images from. So some are from images I've taken and some are from the internet and some are from art history and some are from sort of candy wrappers and advertising and stuff and kind of mixing up different aesthetics and different ways of using imagery and kind of looking what they look like together. It's like a whole thing. Usually I'll start with like a colour palette that I really want to look at, so that's sometimes taken from stuff. So some of the colour palettes I've used before have been from different things. Like one was from like a medicine box and some Baroque paintings. And like when I was working at uni, I used like cocktail cigarette colours and had those matched because I really wanted to look at like weirdly femininized things. So I start with like a colour palette and then I'll sort of search for images kind of around a theme but I try not to think about it too much and then I'll sort of take those dissect them pull them apart a little bit and like process them in different ways and then have them sort of drawn up or draw them up on like acetate so I can kind of project stuff and move them around and then there's kind of like a learnt memory catalogue of different marks as well so like more painterly marks or like scribbles or different like glazes and stuff and kind of building that up so you get the sort of marks that are really just about the body or like abstract references to abstract painting next to the kind of highly processed figurative stuff. I suppose like pop art and like Warhol and then like Sigma poker I really like and that kind of irrelevance to kind of image making um, sort of David Hockney looking at like very sort of feminine spaces and like the use of like feminine in like a queer artist way to kind of bring that in. And at the moment I'm looking a lot at kind of Baroque and Mannerist painting. Um, and I really kind of like the connection between that kind of portraiture and showing yourself and how we show ourselves now on Instagram. And of how the society of the spectacle means that you're not presenting. Sort of modernism wanted you to like, have an authentic view of the world and now it's all about appearing some like something. And that kind of references back to pre-modernist painting where you kind of have a painting of yourself or image of yourself as like propaganda or social status. I don't know, I think we're like extremely good at image reading now, like because our world is so visual and you can juggle like 50 different kinds of image reading at the same time and even people that don't have any real understanding of art, even though they don't notice it, they're reading those images really quickly all the time. And it's kind of interesting to put them together and be like, you can read this bit like this and this bit like that. And then how do they not work together? Which is quite fun. They need to look nice. I want them to be aesthetically pleasing um, or like impactful. And then hopefully you can kind of let your mind wander. And then there are kind of connotations that come in. I don't really like, I don't know, when I make stuff, I don't know what it's going to be about until afterwards. And I kind of like the kind of like, sort of pondering around an image that can happen. So that's, yeah, hopefully like go, oh, 
that's really nice. And then go, oh, okay, that's kind of like that. And that's kind of like that. And that's kind of like that. Bit of a conversation starter. Yeah, having a big space like this or like a like affordable space as well is really good. Um, since uni, I've had like smaller spaces. So it's definitely better to have a space sort of by yourself as well as over the pandemic and being able to like carry on working. And having this amount of space means I can work on some things and then leave them over there and kind of, I don't know, I like to work on multiple paintings at the same time, like seven or eight. So it's nice to have a space I can do that and there's more space to put things away. Especially with like oil painting as well, where it takes like up to a month to dry. If you've got like one space, nothing's gonna happen. At the moment I am um, doing like some pieces for a group show um, for a course I'm on, working towards like a summer show for that. Um, that's like a one day a week thing. I've been reading a lot of classical myth and found a really good uh, group of queer classicists who write sort of interesting stuff about that. So I kind of looking at that and digital culture as well. I'm sort of starting to look a little bit at post-digitalism. I kind of want to make these paintings that have a sort of feel to like Baroque and Mannerist um, classical allegory paintings, but have a sort of oddly digital kind of vibe as well, and sort of maybe take the characters from sort of myths as well, but very loosely. Um, kind of look at that weird sort of existing, not really here or there. Um, but yeah, it's definitely right at the beginning at the moment. <laughs> People are always like, oh, they're really 80s or they're really bold. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> and I kind of like that. I kind of like the kind of, they're fun and kind of intellectually, but they don't look like intellectual paintings. I had some pieces at like Onka and uh, like Locking Gallery here and then like up in London. I did like a residency in China in Chongqing, which was amazing. So for two months I was there kind of collecting imagery and then creating work and showing that with like three other people. That was really, really exciting. That's probably the most exciting place I've exhibited.